Hi, this is David. The good folks at GitHub and Microsoft Learn have created a series of tutorials to help you learn how to use GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot is a, an AI tool that helps to accelerate the development process, and these tutorials help you to understand how that does that. You can find them and follow along at github.com slash Microsoft slash Mastering GitHub Copilot for Paired Programming. I know that's a long URL. I will put it in the show notes to make it easier to find. Uh, here's a, the, you notice that down here, there's a, uh, a list of lessons here. They're grouped by beginner. There's one right here, a bunch of intermediate ones and a bunch of advanced ones. Of course, I'm gonna start with the beginner one, getting started with GitHub Copilot. And to get started, I recommend forking the repository, this button up here, and put it into your own GitHub account. Now, I've already done that, so it's not gonna let me do it again. So I will go over here and you can see there's the entire repository right here. And if I scroll down to this getting started one, it gives an explanation of what it's going to do and then copy the exercise, which will take all of that source code and copy it into your local GitHub repository. I've already done that as well. I don't wanna waste your time waiting for things to copy. And so I'll show you the results right here. So this is my copy of the getting started with GitHub Copilot. And right here, I can, here's all the source code is down in here, right here, but we're gonna see that in Visual Studio Code in a minute. I'll go to the exercise here, and you notice there is actually a, a, a Copilot agent or GitHub agent that's actually running, and it's running this prof professor cat, they call it, and he's giving some advice along the way. It's watching what you do. Uh, go ahead and read that, it'll, it'll, give you some tips as you're working, uh, but I'll follow through this year. Now, I already mentioned that GitHub Copilot is a tool for accelerating your development process, your software development process. Let's show some ways that this is done. And when we get started, we're gonna open this up in GitHub Codespaces. Now, you don't have to do that. If you want to install uh, a, an IDE on your local machine. In this case, the examples are using Visual Studio Code, but you can use any IDE um, and put the ex appropriate extensions in and make sure that it has things like Python because this code happens to be written in Python. You, you can do all that and that's fine, but you can also use GitHub Code Spaces for this. And Code Spaces is a virtualization tool that allows everything to run inside of your browser, including Visual Studio Code and all of its extensions. And that way you don't have to be installing things locally. And if you want, you know, you may want to actually uninstall them when you're done. So it is very convenient for doing this. Uh, so that's click on this button actually makes it easy to do that. I, again, I've already done that. It's right here. This is Visual Studio Code running inside of a browser. It's a virtualization environment that's running inside of my browser. It has everything that I need in here. Uh, if you haven't used Visual Studio Code, I, I strongly recommend you check it out. It is free, it is cross-platform, it is open source, and it is very lightweight. Let's click this button right here to go to open up those exercises again so we can follow along. You can see the steps right here. And it opens up with uh, a description. What is GitHub Copilot? I've already told you that. It's an AI agent that that assists you in developing code. There is an extension for Visual Studio Code that helps it, you to use it inside of that development environment. It talks about how do you get it, download it for free, and you wanna to check to see to make sure that these extensions are installed. So if I go back to my virtualization environment here, I can close this readme file. And over here on the left sidebar, you can see there, I hover over each one. These are the extensions that are installed. And they're all, there's quite a few of them, but if I search for GitHub Copilot, you see that it is installed. You can see that it, uh, I can disable it or uninstall if I want to. And also Python is required here. Python itself, itself is installed as is this Python extension for Visual Studio Code. It's, uh, it looks like you could update to a newer version of it, but I'm not gonna worry about that. This one works well for these purposes. All right, let's get started with this exercise. The first thing we wanna do is to go to a GitHub prompt. And that, there's a, an error, at least as far as I'm concerned, there's an error in this, these instructions. It says to look for this GitHub Copilot icon. And I wanna point out that in my virtual environment, I don't see that icon up here. 
However, I can still get to GitHub Copilot chat through this hamburger menu up at the top left. Here, if I say view chat, that brings me to the same spot, GitHub Copilot chat. And in here, I can ask questions. I can give it instructions. What happens depends upon the mode that I'm in. There are three modes here, ask, agent, and edit. The ask mode I'm going to select right now because all I want to do for this first part is to ask it questions and get answers. I don't want it to immediately start changing my code. And that's real, that can be really useful information. So for example, I will ask it at workspace, please briefly explain the structure of this code. And at workspace is a, an agent that's running inside here that understands the entire repository. It'll look at everything in that repository. I click that little go icon, or I could have just pressed enter, and it'll go and start looking. In fact, it's looking at 24 different references, 24 different files of all the files here in this repository, collecting information, and then it starts telling me about the structure of the application, what the folders are, where the configuration is set up, what does what do some of the important files mean, and you know the index to a main web page, uh, launch JavaJSON, the debug configuration, all sorts of things like that. Really useful stuff. This would be great if I. Uh, so many times when I was a consultant, I would inherit someone else's code and they would say, okay, here's code, uh, usually much larger than this. We want you to add this feature to it or fix this bug. And the first thing I had to do is understand how the code worked. You know, what was the structure of it? Where is the business logic? Where's the data access? Something like this can really help me get up to speed and understand very quickly how that code is structured and how it works. Another thing I might want to ask How do I run it? Notice I just said it. It knows what I'm talking about because there's some context in here that says I'm already talking about this, this application. It refers to that, so it remembered that. And it looks at this, and this is really useful if, uh, for example, I'm not a Python expert. Uh, there are some things that are unique to Python that uh, I need to do before I can even get started, and this walks me through that, tells me what to do. And so maybe I want to create a virtual environment. That sounds like a pretty good idea. And then install the prerequisites. And then I can start the application this way, all sorts of things like that. So this is, um, so before I can do anything, I probably want to create a virtual environment. Notice that it didn't do anything to any files, didn't execute any commands. It's just it's telling me the answers to what I can do. If I want to execute them, then I've got a few options here. One, I can copy it to the clipboard, copy this text right here to the clipboard and paste it in where I want to change a file or run the thing. The other thing is if I click this button and I have a file open, it'll insert this text wherever my cursor happens to be. And finally, I have this one that's the terminal window. And if I click on that, it knows to put it in the terminal window. And that's what I want to do. This is actually a terminal command. Terminal is the command line interface. And uh, I'm going to execute that Python 3 mvnvvnv source activate, et cetera, here. So those aren't that that's good for me. I'm I'm not a Python expert. I don't have that little command line memorized. Yeah, I could Google it with Bing, uh, or I could just ask Copilot. The other thing I want to do is um, install the prerequisites. So there are some dependencies that are required by this. And I want to the, the command pip install. Uh, first upgrade to the latest version of pip and then use this requirements.txt file. I kind of remember that's what I have to do. There's a requirements.txt file and it says, oh, I've got a couple of these things that have to be installed because my application is dependent on them, but I couldn't remember the syntax of that. I'll let Copilot tell me that and I'll put it in the terminal window and I'll run that. Now the dependencies are installed and finally I can actually run that. I use this UVI corn, uh, maybe I'm pronouncing that right, I don't know, but that's uh, uh, to execute the command. It's a web application, so I'm going to run it on port 8000 on my local host right here. Go ahead and put this in here just to show that it works. And you can see it's, it ran the application. It's, it's even given a thing that says open in browser. Let's go ahead and do that. It should open in the browser. And there it is. There's my web application running. Uh, it is actually a 
way for students to register for activities. These the activities are listed here in these cards on the left. There are three of them right now. They're also in this drop down right here. So I can enter an email address. I can say David uh, wants to register for the chess club and I click sign up. Yes, bang, he's registered for the chess club. Let me go ahead and go back to here and I'll press control C to stop running this thing. And finally, what I can do here in this GitHub Copilot chat window is I can give it, uh, ask it just general questions about things like uh, Git. Like for example, if I wanted to create a new branch for this, I say, hey Copilot, how can I create and publish a new Git branch called Accelerate with Git with Copilot? Uh, I'm gonna name that whatever I want, but Let's go ahead and run that, and then it'll tell me what are the Git commands. Git might be something that I've never used. It might be something that I only use occasionally, so I don't have the syntax memorized. So again, I could go out and uh, to a search engine and learn, figure out these commands, or I could ask Copilot. And here's the commands. There's two commands. One, I need to check out this, and then I need to push the current code. So Git checkout will create a branch, and then I'll push the current code into that branch. I'll put this in the terminal window right here and press enter and that will do that and you can see down here accelerate with copilot that branch has been created right here all right we, we now what we've done is all of the steps in step one of this exercise we showed you how to open up a virtual environment in GitHub workspaces, how to ask questions of GitHub Copilot, how to execute commands and some of the different modes of GitHub Copilot. This is David. Thank you for watching.